Hello. Oh, hey, Alison. How are we doing? Good to see you here. Oh, that's perfect timing. So welcome to people that are just joining us. Um, so today I want to talk about a topic that really excites me. And it's one that Spirit has been talking about, just doing like a little bit of information on. So we're going to be talking about the difference between a psychic versus a mystic or mystic versus a psychic, whichever way you want to look at it. So it is something that, um, you know, there is different characteristics between the two. So we'll go through them tonight. Um, I have picked some cards to start with because I'm not only do I love to, you know, see what Spirit says, also do the research, but I love to also see what comes out in the cards too. I find it highly fascinating that spirit will often kind of like meet with where we're feeling or where we're thinking. So if you haven't already um, liked, shared or subscribed, especially to someone that you think would really find this topic interesting on Psychic versus Mystic. Um, I also have a couple of spots left before December, so before Christmas. Um, so please use the two-hour code. I think it's valid until the last day of November. Um, so that will give you a discount on a two-hour reading. But yeah, tonight we're here to talk about the difference between psychic versus mystic. So thank you to those that are just joining and I hope that you're all well. Hey, and lovely to see you here too. So I've got a list of notes. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys this as well. Let me just pop this back on. Oh, and there's my site for anyone looking for bookings. So I've got my tea and it's really, really hard. Let me actually shine this torch. This might work a little bit better. So I don't know if you guys can see it's sort of like a blue. Oh, there you go. So we've got a blue tea here. And this one is one of my soul alchemy potions. And I thought it was perfect for tonight or for today because it's a vision quest potion. So it's a total mystic thing to want to go on a vision quest and to, you know, want to seek this kind of path. I'm just working out how to hold this light at the same time because there's an alchemy trick to this. Now we might just have to do it, but see the color of this. Hold on a sec, guys. Maybe I can tilt the camera. That might work better. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we can see the color here. Now watch as I pour this in. You might see it change color. So there's a secret little potion tip. Oh, you can see the difference. It's terrible with this lighting. Let me pop the torch back on. Look at that. And it's changed from a beautiful blue color into sort of like a purpley pink magenta. You can see it's like pink with purple at the top because it's still kind of mixing. So anyway, we've got Vision Quest tea here tonight. I hope you guys are settled in with teas. For those of you on the other side of the world where it's getting colder. Hey, Melinda. Hey, John. Lovely to see you guys all here. Yeah, I was looking forward to doing this show too. And you will be amazed when you see the cards that have come out for tonight. I was going to pick them later and I was just shuffling and they shot out. So we know that when that happens, that that's when spirit wants us to look into them. So I've got a couple of notes and I will be reading from just like one or two little uh, books. So yeah, just for those that are joining us, I was guided to talk on this um, tonight. Oh, yeah, for those that just missed the tea, you might need to go back and, and watch the magic alchemy. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll talk about, first of all, we'll go into the dictionary definition. So in the dictionary, when we look at the word mystic, it's a person who seeks by contemplation and self to surrender, to obtain unity or absorption into the deity of the absolute or who believes in the spiritual apprehension of truths that are beyond the intellect. So words like transcendental, esoteric, concealed, hidden, beyond the veil, cryptic and symbolic are, are words that are quite often used to describe uh, mystics. So the root word comes from um, an old French word, mystique. Um, it's also uh, via Latin from Greek, mis mustakos, I Please forgive my pronunciation. Um, anyway, so it means an initiated person. It also means close um, the eyes or the lips, uh, close the eyes or the lips. So it really is someone who has 
their physical senses where they can close them down and step into the extra um, senses or the spiritual senses. So it was interesting. So when I to give like a little bit of a background, when I was studying natural medicine, we had these beautiful teachers come out from Denmark, actually, and I saw that um, Mads, you're from Denmark as well. So we had these beautiful teachers come out from Denmark from um, a Polaris center. They were teaching us transformational kinesiology, also known as TK. And I remember that there was a few questions that they had for me. Now, I was only young at the time. I think I was maybe, oh, it would have been before I was 20, I would say, or around 20. So one of the tests that they asked for me, because my teacher had let them know that I see things and that I experience spirit, and they'd been and taught all over the world. And they said that there's a lot of people that talk about, you know, being clairvoyant or psychic, things like this. And so there was a few different questions that they gave me. And they had said to my teacher that, you know, after traveling like all over the world, they'd never actually met someone who had like true authentic gifts kind of in that spiritual world. So I'm not talking necessarily about the psychic side of things, but it's more like the mystic side. So with being more of a mystic, quite often it's not something that you train to do. It's something that you're born with. So it's almost that we're born with like our head in the clouds or beyond the veil. And the rest of us is kind of here on earth um, navigating the physical. So a lot of the time we're learning just as much about the physical world. Um, and sometimes the spiritual world will feel a little bit more comfortable. So we will also go into some of the Vedic astrology types that are more leaning towards the mystic side of things, which will be really cool because you guys will be able to follow it up and have a look into if you have some of these mystic characteristics in your astrology. Um, and I'm just saying, oh yeah, how cool is it when the cards jump out? Hey, Kelly. Oh, thank you. Mystica. Thanks, Ange. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Johnny. I love your photo that you guys sent. I'm amazed. It makes me so happy to see that. Thank you. Show me beautiful transformations that they're going through. Um, okay, so when we look into, so we talked about the root word of mystic. We've talked about the dictionary definition. Now, there's also the gematria. So you guys know that I'm into looking into decoding and I'm looking into gematria. So when we look into the gematria for a mystic, now this also was a little bit of an experiment because I wanted to see the difference between like psychic and mystic and what gematria has to say and whether those, you know, one that feels like a little bit cooler than the other or just like the connections and that to it. So um, mystic, when you put it in, the number value of the word sentences that I'm about to read comes out the same as when you type in mystic. So here I am, or here, what is it? Here I am in human form, I think it was, or here I human form I am. Here human form I am. So a future life, which sometimes like when you're living in a mystic world, it does feel like you're tapping into, you know, a different life or a multidimensional life. Hey, lovely to see you guys here. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Addy. Lovely to see you here. I'm glad you guys caught the live. So um, rays of God, curious, which we definitely know mystics are curious and often will go on quest and adventures and sometimes it will not make sense to anyone else. Um, it also uh, comes out with the same number value as under the tree. When we talk about, you know, the tree of life or we talk about Kabbalah, you know, this is very tied into the mystic walking that Kabbalistic path. So um, also numbered Bible code, miracles unheard of. Now, I found this one interesting. At first, it might be a little bit more unassuming, but miracles unheard of. When we look to um, Vedic astrology and we look to um, one of the main signs, which is uh, Shravana. And so a lot of my information I want you guys to check out Claire Nakti on YouTube because she is amazing when it comes to the Vedic. So she talks about Shravana, and I hope I'm saying it right, um, being connected to the ear in Vedic astrology. So when we look into miracles unheard of, a mystic is able to tune into that world of spirit and into that realm, which is really exciting. It also comes out with the same number of value as the biblical prophets, cleans the soul, Gamil, which in tarot is actually the high priestess. So this little symbol down here near my finger is called Gamil. 
Again, I might not be not pronouncing that right, but this represents the high priestess. So the high priestess is that, um, that conduit between the upper and the lower realms. And we see that here with this beautiful upper chakras of light. And she sort of dips in to beyond the veil. It literally looks like a veil. So we might step a little bit more into that later because I do have, this is really interesting. Um, so yeah, it's connected to Gamil, which is the high priestess. Um, so able to in, enter the mystic realms. So solar eclipse birth. So there could be something interesting around someone's birth or their times. And we will, we will still go in for those that are just joining us into some of the Vedic astrology. So you guys might actually have these traits of being a mystic within your astrology. So the elixir of life, the great sorcerer. I found that one interesting when we look to a lot of the movies and, you know, spiritual quest type themes and that, that we see a lot of these characters, um, according to Claire Narkety, when she's done polls and she's done, um, you know, when you look into a movie, you look into a theme, a lot of these actors that are playing different parts might have some of these um, astrological lineups that we're talking about too. So um, better connection. I found that fascinating. That was cool. Um, the angel is God's chosen. So there's sometimes specific reasons on why people are born with natural abilities. Jumping back to what I was saying to do with um, my beautiful teachers from Denmark and when they were quizzing and testing me and talking about having natural gifts and abilities, it was it was talked about openly in class and some people were like, well, why is she born with abilities and we're not? You know, that doesn't seem fair. And they talked about that it's sometimes the lifetimes before. So Rudolf Steiner also talks about this, that, you know, you can work a lifetime to become an adept and to, you know, understand all of the workings or to kind of see into these um, other realms. And it can take a lifetime, according to him, although I am writing a course that, you know, will fast track and will help you kind of gain insights a lot faster and um, boost your abilities and things too. But what they said to, uh, to the rest of the class was that I'd worked very hard in other lifetimes to get to where I could be born with different abilities and gifts um, already tuned in. So, yeah, that was an interesting thing because, you know, as a, as a young adult or child, you're not really thinking about it. You know, these things are kind of, you know, you're different, but at the same time, it sort of feels normal to you. You don't know what it's like to live without these gifts. Um, so, yeah, coming back to the list. You guys know I jump all over the place. Um, so the angel is God's chosen. Uh, this one was funny for you guys that um, I love that are overseas. It says Australians. So I'm not sure. And um, yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> if there's a higher indication of mystics that perhaps live in Australia. Um, so an ancient sorcerer was also one of the other words that came out with this. And we also had astral connections, cosmic numbers, gnosis of Christ, uh, listen to a higher calling. There was 20 pages worth when you type in the word mystic. So I've just grabbed some of the ones that were standing out to me until spirit said stop. Um, so when we look into the di uh, dictionary definition, hey, Tom, um, happy Thanksgiving to you guys as well. Um, so, yeah, when we look into the dictionary definition of a psychic it says uh relating to or denoting faculties or phenomena that are apparently inexplicable uh by natural laws which means it can't be explained so it also says um or clairvoyance so a person considered to have psychic powers a medium the words associated um uh supernatural paranormal, otherworldly, spiritually, or spiritual, clairvoyant, fortune teller, and a seer. So with the root word, it comes from Greek and yeah, really interesting. Um, what is it? The movie, oh, my big fat Greek wedding with the dad in it. He's such a cute character. He reminds, he reminds me of one of my friend's dads. And he talks about like how all the root words, you know, come from Greek. Um, which when you look up the dictionary, it doesn't seem too far from the truth. So it comes from the root word, uh, uh, and I might not be pronouncing this right, so I'm going to spell it first, P-S-Y-C-H-K-O-S. So 
I sigh. Kesos, it might be, or psychis. Um, so it means of the mind or mental. So it refers in part to the human mind or the psyche. So the Greek word also means soul. In Greek mythology, the maidens oh, and the maiden. So um, psyche was actually the definition of D U F I K S O. Um, it almost looked like the word, um, it's defecation. So they've just, they've sounded it out and broken it up into defecation. Um, so this means the act or the process of exalting to the position of God. So it's trying to kind of raise up human consciousness. Hey, Antonio, lovely to see you here. Um, so yeah, it's trying to raise up or connect one uh, to that con that consciousness of God or to be able to kind of tap into the wisdom, which is, it's kind of similar to like when I'm doing readings and things as well, is that it does feel, so just to kind of describe what it feels like for doing readings and working in those mystical realms, it does feel like that my consciousness kind of just aligns with this higher version of self. So sometimes, you know, there'll be guides and different things that are working with us. Hey, Heidi. Um, but a lot of the time it's actually me just connecting to that other part of my consciousness that has my head on the other side of the veil. I just use the word psychic on my website and things to kind of describe a little bit more to, to everyone that's more familiar with that term, but it's actually more of a mystic working um, that I work with. So when we look into the gematria value of psyche. Now, I haven't written as many. They felt like there was a lot more aligned um, with mystic. So when you type in psyche, the exact number value and word profile comes out as holy one, truther, spirit guide, human rights, angel eyes, an alien among humans, which a lot of you star seeds will also understand and connect with, um, great creator god, light and sound and we know that light and sound is everything hey andrew good to see you here too um so yeah also a big announcement a dream i can't let happen and you guys are going to love this for those of you that love the matrix morpheus is also the same number value as the word psychic now what's interesting if we look into that movie of the matrix morpheus does sort of represent having that precog or that feeling or that sense of knowing but it really is more the oracle that they go to as the mystic and we also see neo in that final moment which i see represents the magnus card um and it's interesting the magnus card for me is like the end of a journey it felt more aligned with the mystic that he all of a sudden feels himself connected to everything and understands um everything hey susan Oh, lovely. I'd love to be up at the Northern Rivers right now. Um, yes, yeah, definitely Alien Among Humans. What a great one, wasn't it? Um, oh, and I think we might have a spammer coming in. So I'm just doing a block. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, and the word sky or S uh, sky. I can never pronounce it, but it's just sky. Um, so S. C R Y, which is, you know, like working with a crystal bowl, divination, kind of looking into things that way. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And let's have a look into the astrology, which is so much fun. So we'll have a look into the Vedic astrology. And I'm just going to block this. I have some of my potion. So what we've got um, with the Vedic side of things. Now, um, for those that are that are watching this, you guys will love to check out Claire Nakti's YouTube channel, and it's spelled N-A-K-T-I. So she talks about Vedic astrology, and she did this amazing video to do with mystics. She collates usually around 125 different um, astrological profiles to really kind of look right who are the mystics of our time and there was amazing ones um, but I'm going to talk about the different signs so there was four main signs in Vedic astrology so for those of you that are interested or getting into Vedic or perhaps know it quite well um, what we actually have is yeah 27 different signs so it's still the normal 12 signs of like Leo, Taurus, all of these but what you'll find is that you shift because Western is based on the planets. 
which are more fast moving and Vedic is based on stars. So what you'll find is that we switch signs. So I go from being a Leo into a Taurus, which no Leo wants to be told that they're not a Leo anymore until you find out that you turn into a goddess. Um, so yeah, really interesting how things can shift and change. And I found that when I actually had a look into um, that side of things, it was actually so much more accurate than the Western in terms of profile and the way that we understand and see things in the world. Um, so the first sign that was on the mystic list was Shravana. Now, I could be pronouncing these names slightly wrong, but it means um, the listener. So they communicate to the higher spiritual realm. So it's got, um, it's, it's a nakshatra in Capricorn. So it's different to the normal Capricorn. There's usually like three signs in Capricorn that will have different characters that go with it. So this is one of the characters of Capricorn. So they're into the strange, the weird, the supernatural powers. So one example that was given in her video was the movie Powder, where we see that, um, you know, he was that white albino boy that had the power to control electricity and was really misunderstood in school. Another one was Haley Joel Osman in, oh, what's that one where he, he says he, say, he sees dead people um, with Bruce Willis. So that was another kind of a, a movie version of it. But yeah, Shravana means the ear. So it's about receptivity. It's about super sensitivity. So sometimes the normal human surroundings might be just a little bit overwhelming. Um, so please remember to share, like, subscribe. Um, so yeah, Shravana is able to kind of tune into the vibra uh, vibrational essence of the universe and of the different realms as well. So quite often you'll see them and they'll have this almost like ET persona to them where they don't seem kind of like of this world. It's more that they're like someone placed from that other realm into our world. Oh, Sixth Sense. Yes. Thank you, Libby. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yeah, so... These are our people that are into psychology, they're the poets, the artists, the prophets, um, you know, the channels. And I'm just checking. Yeah, that's an interesting one too. So Lisa, um, Alison's just said, what happens during Christ consciousness when you're completely merged with God? So that does kind of fit into one of the characters and it might fit into, so there's a different type of mystic that will kind of like, you'll see nuns and different people and there's kind of like a marriage to God itself. So they're sort of seen in a relationship with God. So sometimes that will be like a complete merger with Christ consciousness. Um, <laughs> you're so sweet. Thank you, Tom. That's so beautiful. Um so yeah, then the next one that we move to is Hasta. So Hasta, especially Hasta Moon was one of the ones that was coming up. So this is a Virgo. So I actually have a Hasta Moon. And when you have a Hasta Moon, it sort of talks about your job and what you do for a living. So uh, according to my birth chart, I actually should have been a palm reader or work with tarot which, you know, early on I did really research and get a lot into palm reading um, as a 15-year-old uh, child, but I did settle more with the tarot. So this is how accurate the Vedic can be. So with Hasta, it's that beautiful Virgo energy. And what I love about Hasta is they're seen as this virginal goddess that connects to the other realms, like the higher spiritual realms. And so you'll find sometimes that um, there's another sign called uh, uh, Puva Bharapada. I cannot pronounce this one. Sorry, guys. But anyway, this is usually someone who sort of seeks to more control certain gifts and different things. So they will often seek out to have a relationship with a hasta. Um, so it's that person that has hasta. The perfect example is having your head kind of, you know, behind the veil. So when you look to like the old goddesses and that, and you see them with the veil, these are kind of like the Hustle Moon representatives. Um, so there's something like of a purity that comes through with them and a purity in the way that they connect with these other realms. So it also represents the hand, palmistry, tarot reader. So they see through the veil. So examples of this throughout history, 
there's so many women in the Theosophical Society back in the old days. So Blavatsky, Alice Bailey, um, I think it might have been Annie Leadbeater. My, my, my mind is kind of going more towards those characters. So a lot of these people had Hasta Moon and a lot of the people that were kind of cult leaders will quite often try and surround themselves with women that have Hasta. They're just, there's a natural kind of attraction to these women that have a foot in each world. Um, so the next one that we had, and again, please check out Claire Nakti's video. She just oh my gosh, it's a movie, it's a movie or documentary on this. So um, uh, Purvara Barapada, I cannot say it, sorry guys. Um, so these are the cult leaders, so they want to control the astral. So that's quite often why they might seek to find like a hostile woman especially. So this is like Aquarius Pisces energy. Um, and we have um, Pusha, which is one of the sweeter signs of Vedic astrology. It's Cancerian energy, but they can tend to be quite extreme in terms of like being the mystic. So um, yeah. Oh, thanks, Libby. It's so sweet. I love you guys. You guys are soul family. I always love connecting with you all. So thank you for joining us too. Um, so yeah, with this Cancerian sign of Pusha, I think it was lesser like on her chart. So she looks to like a lot of the mystics throughout the ages and she finds the correlating data. Oh, you know, this group seems to all have this kind of moon or this kind of sun energy. So it's really, it's fascinating. So um, yeah, these guys will often go to the greatest lengths or spiritual quests. So I think there's a movie Into the Wild. I think he had perhaps the pusher and the other movie where the guy climbed um, the cave and ended up losing his arm or climbed the mountains and got stuck. So quite often you'll see that these people go on a spiritual quest to really kind of like denounce or renounce the physical and kind of not see sense or see things in our modern day society as being totally useless. So they will really kind of get to, um, oh, that's it. Thanks, Mads. Yeah, 127 hours. I haven't watched it because the idea of it freaks me out. Can't even imagine. Um, yeah. So let's just have a look and make sure that we're covering everything. Oh, that's right. So I'll just make sure that we've gone into all of the astrology. I think there was a little bit more. Okay, done to that. So what I was kind of looking towards, like some of the beautiful souls that I know. So I sort of see the mystics also represented by what we would call like the indigos. Um, interesting uh, that the video was called The Chosen Ones um, on Claire Nakti's video where it was talking heavily about the mystics in... Um, you know, in Vedic astrology too. So I'm just going to pop this up. And yeah, so ET souls, walk-ins, um, crystals, the rainbow children, people that experience like mystical experiences. Um, some people sometimes that are drawn to like plant medicine, things like this. Um, so there's different things that will activate this mystical essence within some. So as I was talking before about like with myself, um, some of my spiritual teachers, uh, when I was learning um, kinesiology and transformational kinesiology, um, they would talk about, you know, traveling all over the world and teaching and, and that it's quite rare to come across a true mystic. But they do say that it is led up from different past lives. So quite often you might have similar astrology signs. You'll be able to see that in your, I think it's your Rahu in Vedic astrology. And so it's always good to look into Rahu and Ketu in Vedic and North and South node in your Western to kind of see where you've come from, where you're going. Um, but yeah, quite often plant medicine will activate people kind of accessing or shooting through um, that veil. So that's really interesting too, that we can kind of bring on the mystical experiences. Oh, thank you, John. That's so sweet. Um, yeah, the other thing too is spontaneous kundalini activation will actually activate the mystic within. So people will have mystical experiences. And, you know, oh, thank you, Lisa. Um, so, yeah, with these mystical experiences, and I myself, like with having kundalini activation and things, yeah, Alison said LSD helps too. <laughs> 
Um, Blue Lotus is a nice natural alternative to kind of activate that DMT if anyone's looking for a more subtle, you know, like a, a T range um, to, to go through that. Um, but yeah, so what you'll actually find is when we look to the pineal gland and Kundalini activates, you will get a dripping of nectar that comes from the pineal gland that will kind of feed you on a nutrient level. But it's like this gold nectar that activates things too. <laughs> I love your sense of humor, girl. Um, yeah. So also it kind of drew me to look towards like the Siddhis. So I did actually look up the number value of Siddhis as well, which is someone who has supernatural powers and gifts. So for example, a Siddhi would be like the characters that we see in X-Men or the characters that we see in, thank you, um, you know, the Marvel movies and that, that have, um, so one of my favorite examples, and I know you guys will have your favorite superhero as well, um, is Jean from X-Men who has that gift of telepathy. So you see her, you know, checking out and she kind of like remote views situations and different things and has that helmet that um, Professor X puts on cerebral. Um, so yeah, cool movies if you haven't seen them. But yeah, we we do see kind of Siddhi powers. And I think in Vedic um, side of things, there's like, I think it's like 40,000 or 400,000 different Siddhi powers that have been identified throughout the ages. Um, so yeah, it's totally interesting. Yeah, you can claim back different past life powers and things, sometimes releasing contracts and agreements. So this is something I work with in um, sessions is we can tap into past life powers, abilities, things like that. So definitely like with our next session, Alison, let's have a look more into if there's anything else that we need to do um, for that. That'd be really cool. So um, the other thing too, Let's have a look. So, yeah, with a bodhisattva, um, so they're more kind of like wanting to achieve nirvana or achieve nirvana, but then they delay it because they have um, this beautiful heart and compassion and see kind of like a suffering with humanity and they choose to stay here and help. So these things I've kind of included because they do relate to someone who is on that mystic journey or path, but they've chosen to stay and help humanity. So I thought this was all um, kind of tied in. Hey, Missa, um, let me see what else. Yeah, so sometimes you'll find that a mystic has gone through an initiation. So this is kind of like more what Steiner talks about as well, Rudolf Steiner. Um, and so they can rise into the spiritual world. So um, this is where you become a mystic is what I've written. Uh, let's just check what else we've got. It's just so much fun going down this rabbit hole. Oh, and speaking of Vedic astrology and things, my main sign um, in modern day actually represents Alice in Wonderland. So this is why I like to go down rabbit holes and different things. Um, it's actually the sign of Taurus, Rohini. But um, yeah, Claire Nakti, check out her work again. Um, she talks about it being Alice in Wonderland. So this is why I love to go on adventures and get sidetracked and I have to drink the tea to find out that I'll shrink or that you know, <laughs> it'll grow tall. Um, so yeah, everyone has psychic capabilities. This can be developed and open up into other realms. Um, so we can develop things such as mediumship. Now, not everyone talks about, I guess, the difference with mediumship. So for example, when I'd studied mediumship in the past and I studied with Greg Riley, who won um, Australia's TV show called The One, I actually stopped his watch working. So I got up to do platform and being dyslexic, there was a board with all of the writing and things that we had to go through and check off. And I just said, just give me a second to focus. I need to just pull my energy back in and just like connect and calm myself and instantly his watch um stopped working he was shaking the watch he's like you broke my watch and I'm like it's the battery I'm sorry so sometimes you'll find just like in the case of powder with um shravana the um the Vedic sign is that you will sometimes have like that mind over matter or that effect like a Siddhi power where streetlight phenomenon, which is seen quite often with ET contactees. We affect streetlights. I've had so many blenders and things blow up over the years. 
What I've noticed is when we control our emotions, you're less likely to have electrical issues. Um, so it's not uncommon to have electrical issues happen all in one week. The other week I had, I think, three things go. There was the thermomix started to go funny, the washing machine, and I think there was another thing. I can't remember what it is now. Oh, my phone glitching out. And I know that when this sort of thing is happening, it's to meditate. It's to come back to peace and calm. So strangely enough, all of those things are working perfectly fine now. Um, but just notice these things because it's all interconnected with what we're talking about. So, um, yeah, just jumping back to talking about uh, with the psychic side of things. So everyone has these capabilities. We can all develop them. We all actually have this anatomy. So for those that have followed my work for a little while, you'll see me quite often dip into talking about the sinuses, the sphenoid bone the pineal gland and you know this beautiful butterfly shape the gateway the crystals that are connected that make this tetrahedron in the center of the brain with all the plasma around it um so yeah with this we all have these physically it really is just to turn and amplify the frequency to kind of face this um this spiritual realm and to bring down and draw upon the information that comes from there as well um, oh, have you looked at the mandala effect? When you mentioned Alice in Wonderland, I just remembered a difference. Oh, I haven't looked at that to do with Alice in Wonderland, but I did come across a cute little deck of Alice in Wonderland cards yesterday, which I'm thinking of getting. They're really cute. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear. Thanks, Mads. Um, so yeah, so we all have the spiritual anatomy to be able to develop the gifts. A lot of the time it is dedication focus. And um, this is also a big factor of why I'm writing a psychic course on activating the psychic senses, because for me, there was no guidebook growing up. I really just had to, you know, um, have the equations come to me. So I had to download what does what does it feel like when I see yellow around someone? Or what does it feel like when I get this symbol or this frequency? So um, psychic intuition can also be experienced through dreams, feelings, thoughts can come in. Sometimes we'll also receive like an internal voice. Um, um, our guides or empathic feelings is also kind of like an extension on the psychic side of things. Now with a mystic, it's about tapping into the super sensible um, world. So the ones that we actually kind of vacate the physical senses to build that bridge to go up into the heightened senses. So the more that you work with the psychic abilities and that, the more that you will open up to the mystic spiritual realms too. So we must lose kind of like that sense of ego to access these realms. So it's almost like you go up and out of this physical side of things. Now, with the different signs in the Vedic, each sign will have a different way of connecting. So with Hasta, which is my moon, um, we tend to kind of listen. Whereas like with Shravana, they might be the channel that has spirit fully come and take them over. Um, whereas, yeah, with Hasta, we're able to kind of listen and relay. I don't feel so comfortable when I have something else come and, you know, jump it in body. So I've, I've done spiritual mediumship a few times. It's not really my thing. It feels a little bit weird. Um, so yeah, and there's a whole heap of things that you need to do, pre-checks and, and different things like that before doing any work like that. Um, but yeah, so it's about kind of like losing or renouncing the ego in a way to access, access these higher worlds. So it's more connected with what our soul feels. So a mystic is able to pierce through the veil into the other realms. They do away with the limitations and uh, limitations of ego to explore higher states of consciousness and go beyond. So they travel outside of oneself, not limited by the brain and the heart. Um, and I've put a little question mark around quantum, which is like more one of our, you know, modern day uh, terms too. Oh, thanks, Libby. You're gorgeous. Um, so yeah, with this, so perhaps exist or tap into the wave not just the particle. So when I look to quantum physics and I apply this kind of, you know, equation of what a mystic is versus a psychic or what it is to kind of be in the human state versus the spiritual state, um, 
what I was really feeling into was it's more about getting out of the physicality. So we know that our body is made up of about a tablespoon or a teaspoon of physical actual, um, I'm just going to block this person. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see some of those words coming up. Um, thanks Tom. Um, so yeah, with this, that's more kind of existing as a particle physical state. So we kind of need to step outside of the physical state um, to experience this. So this is where Dr. Joe Dispenza's work and the work of like gateway techniques and getting more into theta brainwave or even like delta and gamma helps get us up into mystic levels. So these are things that you guys can all practice at home. And I will be going really in depth with my course as well. Um, it's just taking a while to film everything because it's like so far, I think 32 parts. Um, so yeah, it will be like quite in depth, but yeah, so it allows us to kind of travel outside of oneself, not limited to the brain and the heart. Now there's definitely mystics so the Shravana one is more kind of like the mind, the poet, whereas like with um, Hasta, it's more connected to the heart. So you will have some of the signs or mystics that are heart and, oh, thank you so much for putting up the example. I'm going to have to check this one out. Um, but yeah, so you will have a combination of those and you'll have the signs that are mystics that will renounce everything on the physical level. They don't want to work with the brain or the heart. They want to sort of push through, which sometimes can tap into madness a little bit. Um, so it's best to have the heart and mind intact to be able to translate. So this is more kind of like that has to sign that we work as a translator from spirit to kind of relate it on a human level. So we'll see a lot of signs and symbols we'll be able to translate the different emotions, the different feelings that we feel on a higher realm. Um, so yeah, it's, um, they use the spiritual force of the heart as well, um, with some of the mystics. So communicating directly with nature. So this is more kind of connected to sometimes maybe like perhaps like the, the house design again as well. There was a lot of information on that particularly on Shravana. If you guys have Shravana placement, the whole first video Claire Nakti did um, was on Shravana. So um, yeah, so some of the mystics are able to directly communicate. So you might know people that work as like animal psychic. So I definitely have worked a lot with animals, working with racehorses, working with cats, dogs, ferrets, mice, all sorts of beautiful animals where you can tap into their states of consciousness. So an example would be when my kids were younger, when we did actually go to zoos, we don't go to zoos anymore, but I would teach the kids to drop their consciousness into the heart space because this is where animals operate on, especially great animals like elephants, dolphins. And I've had experiences where dolphins have turned around and come back towards when I've dropped into heart space and said, can you hear me? Please come back. Elephants have walked over from paddocks to come up to the fence, to stand and rock side by side looking at us. Um, and when you sort of turn off that connection or you say goodbye, they walk off. So animals are definitely in tune and vibrational alignment with when we get into that space of the heart and we get into that space of the mystic. And it's almost as if the psychic wall goes down with animals, especially you will feel and see images and emotional impressions that come from them. So they more work within the mystic realms is what I've found, which is just it's beautiful to experience for those of you that have a chance to experience. Um, so yeah, it's more that they mystics are able to tap into true divine wisdom as well. So it's not so much like with the psychic fortune teller side of things, which is still very handy and it still helps us in, you know, modern physical life of where we've got decisions and different things to make with a mystic. We more tap into, um, you know, spiritual beings that live beyond the veil. So you guys all know like how I talk about, you know, connecting to ETs or I have nature spirits and elementals that appear in some of my videos and photos and things around. So these guys are more kind of working with mystics um, and they're around a lot of us anyway, but it's just the mystics sometimes will have a different um, life force quality of where sometimes we're able to capture pictures. There's a lot through the old days of theosophy with spiritual mediumship um, where they would produce ectoplasm, which is like this weird cobweb type substance that is made up 
of minerals and different things, but it's connected to the spiritual realm that enters the physical. Um, so there's a whole heap of cool stuff from like the old days of theosophy. Um, so I've also written, um, so yeah, we use the forces of the heart to communicate directly with nature, bypassing um, overstimulated intellect. So in a way, it is kind of like renouncing the intellect and going beyond. Hey, rainbow sun. And I'm just going to check. So Lisa said, what do you think about observers when we meditate and in the day um, to do with psychic or a mystic? So sometimes there is spiritual observers too, which I would say are more kind of like on that mystic path, kind of like seeing um, what's happening. So I hope I understood your question. Um, yeah, and I've just put here as well. So life itself becomes a feeling of nature. So this is more where we feel connected to the sun. A lot of us that are probably, you know, the cell family are more connected to do with messages, downloads, to do with nature at the moment, the sun. So we are all on that mystic path. Um, and don't feel left out like if it hasn't included your Vedic signs, because there are a lot of people that still, you know, will choose a mystic path and still have those abilities. But you might be doing it through another one of your signs, because there's a lot of beautiful signs. And that's where I say, go check out Claire's videos. Um, so, yeah. Um, so also a mystic is connected like with the five elements, with the planets. So we're able to kind of pick up on or draw inspiration or information that comes in. We're quite often like, you know, like astrology, different things. Um, yeah, they're able to also tap into the supernatural qualities or the natural divine qualities, the divas of the plants, um, the gnomes, the fairies, all of these things is kind of like what mystics are able to tap into as well. Uh, yeah, so great that you caught it live as well. Um, so yeah, it says here as well that a mystic I've written can be a pure channel of the mind or the heart or the heart-mind combo. So this was one of the top ones, was the heart-mind combo. So being able to kind of tap into the veil, but be able to bring down um, information that we can then understand with the intellect. So this is for a lot of us. We see things in symbols, we see geometries, but we're able to translate it into a tangible um, sentence rather than just go banana <laughs> or orange, um, you know, these sorts of things. So um let me just see it as well. So I've written as well. So um, sometimes it'll be when there's mystic union, which we see with nuns and different beings, they will suppress, like suppress the earthly consciousness and have a marriage with God or with the divine. Hey, Michelle. Um, so, um, so an occultist sometimes will realize um, the earth connections and live more in the supersensical world. So we see that with um, some beings that want that access with the higher uh, realms and that. So when you look into some of the famous occultists or even cult leaders, they will more kind of renounce some of the normal society and physicality and just strive more to occult knowledge and different things. Um, so sometimes we see that go quite wrong <laughs> throughout history. So um, with, um, I'm just having a look, if there's anything that we've missed. So yeah, with a mystic as well, they're quite often focused on consciousness, connection, going within or going out of body. Um, Hold on a sec, guys. Oh, sorry. Um, please ignore spam, guys. We don't recommend anyone that is spamming on here for readings. You guys know that. You guys are smart and intelligent, um, so just ignore it. Um, so, yeah, mystics are often very attracted to theosophy, but they do connect, like, with higher realms and with God. So a lot of you here will be, like, seeking that. Um, just ignore um, the spam. I'm not able to block it on here, unfortunately, because I signed into Facebook. So let's also have a look into the Gematria version of a city, which works with superpowers. And I have also, I've got to read something to you guys in here and show you the cards and things. Um, so yeah, so a city is a name given by ancient Hindus 
to the spiritual gifts that activate upon enlightenment. So we see powers like this in X-Men, Marvel. So quite often you'll see them go through a transformation or where there's some kind of incident, activation, or even sometimes a trauma where they get um, a superpower. So um, we see um, usually they're activated by Kundalini rising. So sometimes we'll see examples of this. And for those of you that do want to book a reading, I do have the two-hour um, discount code that's valid till the end of November. Just remembering to flash that up. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, we have a Crystal Bowls event that's on my booking calendar that's going to be running this Sunday, or it'll be your Saturday evening um, afternoon if you're in the States or Canada. So please join us for that. It's a transcendental sound immersion where we'll be doing crystal bowls, working with crystal grids and things like that. It's going to be really fun. Um, so, yeah. So uh, some of the cities are born naturally with the powers. So we see that with some of the super psychic kids that are in China or Japan, um, Russia, other parts of the world. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. When we type into Gematria Sidhi, which is S I D D H I, we get the same number value words of faith, Dharma, which means like your spiritual path or your spiritual mission, um, God being, being God, old magic, a Fibonacci, um, Benath. Um, so Benath, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, is actually the second Hebrew alphabet letter. Um, so this is actually associated with the card of the magnets or the magician in um, in tarot. So I also relate this in modern day times to Neo waking up in the matrix. We see that he has these super powers, these abilities and different things too, which is really cool. And I've actually got, you can find, you know, online the different breakdowns of the Hebrew letters. So it was really interesting that we had two Hebrew letters come up. So with, um, the high priestess, I think it was, um, Camille, which was related to the mystic. It's an adept person that can go between worlds um so yeah the other words that we had with Sidhi is a god code and oh did I have an all I'm gonna have to go back and watch this I think it was around maybe 50 minute mark um that's so cool oh I live so it too thanks girls I'm gonna check it out after um so with Sidhi the number value was a god code and heal so part of like why this came up to talk about this topic. So you guys know I've been working hard to put together the psychic course. Now, sometimes like being dyslexic, I don't always read a book front to back and being a little ADHD, which is attention dialed into a higher dimension <laughs> is the acronym. Um, oh, cool. Thank you. Um, so yeah, sometimes I will use books as oracles. So highly encourage if spirit calls you to the bookshelf and says to open a book, sometimes it's because there's a message, just like an oracle card as well. Um, so yeah, this book, The Healing Power of Your Aura, attracted me because it's rainbow <laughs> and because I love auras. So this is some book that I've had for, I don't know, quite a while now, but what stood out? was this page and it talks about auric manifestation being observed so i've just highlighted and i'm just going to read this to you oh and this book is by barbara wyman so i think she considers herself to be more of a mystic um yeah that's so cool that's right man it's the fourth matrix uh, matrix movie really shows a new view on this realm so definitely does Oh, cool. Libby's got it as well. So I'll just read to you. It's on page 15 for those that have it at home. And it says clairvoyance, French for clear seeing, is a generic term referring to two types of clairvoyance, the mystic and the psychic. By far the most common type of clairvoyance is psychic clairvoyance. We are all um, psychic to some degree, but are more attuned to the uh, psychic nature than others. Oh, but some are more attuned to the psychic nature than others. Oh, hey, from Ohio. Hey, Melissa. Um, so, yeah, it says here as well. Um, so psychic vision can be alluring, but I strongly caution people about taking psychic um, 
uh, taking psychic perception too literally. The psychic realm is a mixed vibration. There are enlightened and unenlightened levels to the psychic realm. So you cannot tell through psychic perception alone if you are seeing something 100% accurate. Mystic vision, however, is completely accurate and has a far greater range of perception than a psychic has. So if we're looking at it in the difference of different radio stations, the more that we can raise our frequency and um, vibration, the more that we're able to attune to these higher realms. So these are degrees of spiritual clairvoyance, um, as well as for the most part, two mystic clairvoyants looking at the same spiritual phenomena will see it more or less the same way. However, mystic clairvoyance is rare. I've only come across a handful of souls who have true um, spiritual clairvoyance. Two of these people come to mind or oh, as her spiritual teacher uh, teaches. So it says, I can tell you from personal experience, there is no comparison between the two. A psychic is wonderful, but the mystic senses are far more complete. The observations presented in this book are purely based on mystic perceptions. So <clears throat> it says here, there are many different dimensions and frequencies to the spiritual realm, far more than the physical. And don't forget, even if we're to use the representation of the visual spectrum, we only see in about 3% of the visual spectrum. So life is much bigger than that. The plasma field is one of the fundamental um, fabrics of space and time and um, underlies everything. And we can't really see plasma either. So a lot of our world is actually non-visible. So a mystic is able to see more into these other realms. Um, so yeah, the difference of dimensions and frequencies to the spiritual realm, far more than to the physical. To make sense of all these frequencies of energy, you must have to tune into aspects of um, the aura one at a time, like tuning into a radio station. So yeah, just talk about like harnessing these gifts and things too. Um, that is a great question. So with the remote viewing side of things, and I have done remote viewing, what I find is very interesting because it's more using the intellect or the mind part to tune in. So for me being more heart-based, in combination with the mind, with the half to moon, I actually will use my empathic sense to tune in with remote viewing. So I still might empathically tune into the number um, that you get with remote viewing, and then I'll go through the multitude of senses, but I tune more into the emotional um, vibration of the people or the animals or the scene um, that you get hits on. So there is different ways of kind of doing remote viewing. It's really more of a, a left brain approach is what I find in a male brain approach doing traditional uh, remote viewing. Whereas I find the right side of the brain, the creative tap in feels more aligned like with the, um, the feminine aspect. But that was such a great question. The other thing that I wanted to mention as well was the cards that came out for today to kind of communicate to us from spirit and from the other side of the veil how they kind of view or how they wish to explain what it is to be a mystic. So the first card that came out was the high priestess. Now for me, she has this beautiful antenna of the pineal gland with the tuning fork on top. So she's in vibrational alignment. She's within frequency. It's all operating from a higher level too. So she's kind of raised her consciousness to such a level. Um, we also see that she's no longer kind of trying to chase or run after things. She just is like in contact with these other realms. So this also relates, and I'll just read this really quickly. So this relates to Gamil um, in Hebrew, which also came up with that um, to do with the mystic when we put it into Gematria. So this also explains that Gematria that we were talking about before. So after Benath establishes the existence of two opposites, Camille, which is the third principle, which arises and resolves to harmonize these opportunities um, or harmonize these opposites, Camille links and balances between the Aleph and the Benath, so the original one and the creator, and it's kind of connected to heart as well. So it's a dynamic, a dynamic balance between opposites or opposing powers. So Camille is the letter, um, of constant transformation, change, motion. It translates, uh, translates literally into camel, um, an animal we associate with motion. And we see that white camel, not too dissimilar to like white buffalo and the things connected with that. So we often associate it with faraway places. Gamil also 
um, is the opposite of both giving and receiving and the reward and punishment, creating balance and motion between the opposites. Camille resolves the um, giver, the receiver, the Aleph, the Bina, so represents giving and receiving to represent kindness and cultivation, the organic nurturance that causes things to grow. So in Hebrew, it's called Gamal, um, which means to nourish or ripe. So it's to wean a child to ripen fruit. It also means um, giving and the leg of Gamil is said to represent the rich man returning to give charity. So this is where before we were talking before about a, a bodhisattva and sometimes they choose to stay on earth to, um, oh yeah, white buffalo was in um, some American Indian prophecies. They talked about that when we come into a time of change, that white buffaloes will be seen. So we've seen white dolphins, white whales, um, other various different white animals all over, which shows that we're in that sign of the spiritual shift. Um, yeah, this is an amazing deck. Um, oh, thank you, Katie. Kiora to you as well. Or Kia Aura. I can never say it properly. Um, so yeah, with this, what we see with Camille, it represents the rich man returning to give um, charity to the poor represented by the fourth letter. So it signifies the creator's um, eternal benevolence to all creation manifested with abundant life and prosperity. The Camille also reaches uh, uh, represents reward and punishment. The word represents the giving of both reward and punishment. The laws created... Um, world are based on the rule of judgment. Blessings are able to flow through to those who do good, while wrongdoings blocks um, receipt of goodness and abundance. Thus, both kindness and justice are maintained in balance. And that is something that Claire Nafti also goes into her video is like the outer balance aspect of some of these signs too. So um, it's really interesting to look into, you know, the balance with the mystic world and not getting lost in it. Um, so yeah, we have the high priestess here and all of the platonic solids are on this card. Earth, air, fire, and water is represented within, um, this card as well. We also have the plumeria or frangipani flower, which is that connection to beyond the veil, that spiritual world. So we see a lot of those flowers grow where the veil is quite thin, like in Hawaii, Bali, um, some of the beautiful paradise places here in Australia. The next card that Spirit gave us so these were the first two that jumped out. Then I got guided to pick two more. So we have Nine of Wands, which is like a spiritual warrior. It shows connection. It's a Sagittarius um, energy with the sun. And we also see the lunar eclipse down the bottom too. So it can also represent great change. It also represents sort of that luminary aspect that we sometimes go through on that path to being an adept or on that path of the mystic. That, you know, it's not always easy, not always straightforward, but that's kind of the reward at the end of it. So with the Sagittarius energy, for me, the high priestess represents that an exalted form. So we see the bow and arrow are on her legs. So she sort of knows now that she doesn't need to keep working so hard that she can just literally go in to higher connection. The next card we had come up is six of discs, which is the moon and Taurus. So it can be slow moving to activate this, but we see the beautiful access into these other realms. Now, what's interesting is the six represents that something being birthed on the physical. So it's, we're tapping into the higher realms. I also see this beautiful, I call it a Magdalene rose right in the center and the gold and the pink. For me, this is divine feminine, unconditional love, mothering, nurturing energy. We then had lust. Now, if this doesn't represent tapping in beyond the veil, um, you know, it's just amazing what spirit gives us to try and help convey what they see. And a lot of what I work with is not only higher self and guides, but it's also what I would say is kind of like the creators of the matrix or beings that exist on the other side of this realm, trying to give us a little breadcrumbs or I call it cookie crumbs because it's much sweeter. Um, but what we sort of see too is that she's mastered or lassoed all of like the, the lower entities and things. So she's kind of shut out from anything that could distract her on the astral and she's gone straight into higher realms. Now, what's interesting is the magnetism that she has. We know that even when we look at biology on a cellular level and we look into human anatomy, now this also relates to 
when we look into the difference between a male, which is kind of like more actively suing and um, seeking things, and we look into the difference as a female. So the female ovum or the egg is magnetic. So she draws things to her. She quite often draws or is seen as this connection, um, the universe or that gateway between both worlds. So this kind of represents this beautiful energy too. So for my beautiful goddesses out there, work that magical power, work at really like magnetizing things to you. Um, yeah, tap into your goddess powers and abilities. We're so lucky to, to have that. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. I, oh, they're asking for a card from... Um, Oracle of the Hidden Worlds. So we'll quickly do that just to kind of finish it off. But thank you so much, everyone, for, for joining. I've had so much fun with you guys here today. And it's so cool just to be able to share this conversation. And I want to check out that Alice in Wonderland thing that you were talking about, Hans, as well. Um, but yeah, please remember to like, share, subscribe. We like to be divergent in getting the algorithm to work in our favor. So that would be wonderful. Um, and I do have, here's my website for anyone wanting to check out some more info. I do have all of the links and things below. I might have to go back in and um, pop one to Claire Narkti's channel as well. And here is the two hour um, psychic reading discount code. So this applies to the couple's readings and to the two hour. And in a reading like this, especially like if you are kind of walking on this path, Oh, thanks, Angie. Um, check out the last show I just did with Angie on the weekend too, where we talk about plant medicine and the secret teachings of plants. So, um, oh, thanks, Katie. So, yeah, with... Um, oops. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, everyone. So, yeah, with... Um, oh, we'll just pick these cards. I've lost train of thought. Let's have a look. All right, so all right, so this is the one that we've got, and this is really interesting actually. Um, this represents us as a collective, is what I feel. So we've got the gathering, it's number 33 for those of you that love your numbers and conspiracy theories and things. Um, so we see that it's a beautiful gathering. So each time we gather together like this, we're building frequency, we're building energy, and that also is a ripple out effect across the universe too. So, you know, this means so much to me that we're able to kind of hold space together. Um, so I will look this one up. This also reminds me of the Syrian water temples where the oracles would work. So back on um, the star system Sirius, we would have these beautiful temples that had pools of water and we would tap in and look into the water skyring um, and we would look into the different realms and sometimes we would send galactic help and different things. Um, and even in Aboriginal culture or original people culture, water is seen as a portal. And I know even, um, I remember JCK, the psychic also saying as well that she sees water as portals and that's what I've been shown too. Um, and rainbow serpents are quite often seen water portals traversing in and out of these different worlds. So uh, thank you everyone. So I'm just going to pop over to 33. So it says community, kinship, companionship. So when you gather, we are hidden, uh, we of the hidden world see you. Oh, so even just with us gathering now, we're connecting in to these other hidden worlds. It's beautiful. So when you gather, we of the hidden world see all about you and the connections you are weaving, the community, the kinship, the relationships you create, and not only woven from hand to hand, but heart to heart. So it says, you do not only stand together in a circle and reflect the shape of Gaia, the shape of the stars, the shape of the temples, um, the stones, the nest of the birds, the eggs, the beginning, the zero. You gather together and weave a relationship of the universe, the consciousness, intelligence that the universe is supported by, the relationship that is awakened and healing, that have their heart um, Heart, a desire to commune with each other in ways that create fertile place for healing and understanding. That's exactly what we're doing here with all this beautiful love <laughs> um, that we see um, amongst you guys in the soul tribe. 
So with the small circles of your life, the smile you offered for no reason, the kindness you lent without exception of return, the offering to another who is experiencing lack, all create community. So all create relationship, all create understanding, all are sacred and contribute to the place where the planet can be nurtured and fed by your higher self. There may be many times, um, you, uh, there may be times where you gather in sacred ways, times when your footsteps trace those of your ancestors, where you wear the garments worn, uh, woven from your stories. There, yes, it is sacred. But the spirit is often held in your very action, your word, your uh, movement. It is there that the true work is done, bright soul. Reach out this day and take hand, lend a hand, be in a relationship for then. While it may be unseen, you awaken to the temples and the beings of uh, light rejoice. So the illumination that we've got here. Today, I will create community, weave relationship, I will connect. So thank you so much of you all for, for being here. That's exactly what we've been doing, what we've been weaving. Um, yeah. So I, and good night to like everyone over the other side as well. Um, love you all. And oh, here is my site as well. Just popping these up. Just a little reminder. Okay. But yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Have a beautiful weekend too. I love you lots.